Hi guys, I'm Rachel O'Leary, and today I want to talk about Venus flytraps. They are exceptionally popular because of the trapping action of their leaves, where they ingest various insects as part of their natural nutrition. And I think they are probably one of the most often abused and poorly kept plants sold commonly, at least in my opinion. And they're kept really poorly, mainly out of ignorance, so have the reputation of being extremely difficult. The truth is, they are difficult, but we can set ourselves up for success in a few ways. First is, as with most plants or animals or anything, is really understanding where these guys come from in order to, to set them up properly uh, in our homes or yards. They come from low-lying wetlands in North Carolina and some spots of South Carolina. Um, and they have been introduced to other areas, but those areas where they are native are severely threatened because those wetlands have been drained and destroyed for agriculture and industry and things like that. But what's important to note about where they're from is they get a ton of sun. It gets pretty hot in the summers in the Carolinas and they get full sun. So keeping these indoors can be tricky um, because it's difficult to produce a full sun environment indoors. They also get a chilly winter, which means they need a dormancy. Now they may survive for a couple of years without this dormancy, but unless you provide it, they are going to die. Um, they come from sunny, warm bog habitats. They have very small, uh, sensitive root systems, and it's very easy to kill your plant by repotting your plant. So you have to take a lot of care there, too. I know the tendency for most of us is when we get a new plant from the nursery or whatever to repot it right away. But I think especially with Venus flytraps, this can be a big mistake. So how they work or how they grow is basically in the spring, they get these long, skinny leaves. Um, you'll often notice these uh, this as well on indoor plants. And again, that's insufficient light. I can't stress to you guys enough how important it is to give these guys tons of light. Uh, the trapping part of their leaf is called the lamina or the leaf blade. The long leafy part is called the leaf base and it connects the lamina to the ground. And then the petiole connects the leaf base to the lamina. So if you give these guys good growing conditions, which means uh, nutritionally deplete soil and the appropriate water, which means rainwater, RO water, or distilled water, you'll find that they'll do pretty well if you just leave them alone. Now, one thing that you do need to do um, is that if they form a flower, you really want to cut off that flower stalk before it buds up and grows, as this really uses up a lot of the resources that the plant needs to continue to produce traps. Um, I have let one flower once just so that I could show you guys, but I always, always, always remove my flower stems. Now, of course, there's people who are interested in pollinating the flowers and getting seeds and growing fly traps from seed. And if you're one of those advanced growers, good on you. I am not. I prefer to propagate this plant through um, vegetative propagate, propagation, uh, which means basically you can pull leaves and at the bottom there's like this white spot. Uh, you can lay that on soil, cover it with some phagnum and plants will grow out of that base. Much easier, but you have to have a lot of patience for that. Um, the traps are interesting as well in that they can only really trigger about a half a dozen times before they stop working as a trapping mechanism and just are a regular photosynthesizing leaf. Um, again, I think these are super, super fun. I keep them in a soil mix that is 50% sand, 50% peat moss. Um, I water them from the bottom. These don't like to be in super, super wet environments, but they do need to stay well watered. Uh, I collect rainwater to water mine, and I just make sure that the soil always stays humid. If you were to be growing them indoors in an extremely sunny windowsill with supplemental lighting, you would, uh, put, you know, put only a little bit of water. Basically, you want to keep them the soil moist, but not soaking wet. Now let's talk about dormancy again. Um, I live in Pennsylvania. My winters get entirely too cold to not intervene at all during the winter. Um, but these plants, as mentioned, do need a dormancy. Generally, 
Uh, 45 days of 45 degrees or cooler is required in the wild. This would occur from about October to February. Um, and you'll notice that during that time, a lot of the traps or most of the leaves will turn black and die back. This does not necessarily mean your plant is dead. It just means it's going through its rest period. Uh, you can duplicate this in cold climates like mine by moving the plants into a garage I do find, though, that they require quite a bit of light, so it's I prefer to insulate them outdoors, and I use about 12 inches or so of pine leaf litter to do it, and I put that on once it's about to get super cold, and I pull it off once the risk of super hard frosts are gone. Um, again, with these guys, it's not really about how cold it get, they get, it's about how fast they get cold. So they can take some pretty extreme temperatures, but you just want to prevent them from freezing hard and fast. Um, I've been growing them outdoors now for two years and they're doing really well. Now, if you're growing them indoors and you want to be able to do this dormancy, uh, there's a few different things that you can do. If you have a window that gets profoundly cold, you can put them there, or you can actually take them out of the soil, wrap them with some damp sphagnum, and put them into the refrigerator. And that's probably the easiest way to do the forced dormancy for these guys. Um, but it's absolutely something that has to be done, especially for the average grower. All in all, I think these guys are super fun, super cool, and I would love to feature more of my carnivorous plants for you guys. So if you're interested in that, let me know down in the comments. And thanks for the continued support.